Hey everyone, Miranda Patron back here with you to do another mandala video. I have this lovely fall leaf mandala for us to do tonight, and it's on this lovely Santorini stone. I'm also going to do a stencil to go with it with step-by-step -step instructions, and that will be available in my Etsy shop. Um, probably at a little bit of a later point in time. It takes a little bit to type out all the steps. But for now we have the video that we can do tonight and I'm really excited to get started on this. I'm excited about the palette, love the colors, love the shape, and uh, yeah, just excited to do this with you. So let's get started. Okay, so we have this lovely Santorini stone here and these stones are the large flat white rocks from Cap Couriers and you can find them on Amazon. They're a great company, they have great customer service and great stones. Uh, these ones I love with the sparkle and the shine. It's going to be perfect for the contrast of our lovely little leaf tonight. And I'll post the links for the stones in the description of the video. So again, it's capcouriers.com, but you can find them on Amazon. Just search Cap Couriers Painting Stones and you will find all of their selection there listed on Amazon. Alright, so I'm going to be using the smaller 3 inch leaf tonight. And this stone that I'm painting on is about, let's see, this one is five over, just over 5 inches by 4 inches. So our little 3 inch scale leaf is going to fit on that perfectly. Now you, if you go to Etsy and you download these, it'll be a PDF that's printable and then you can just print it on whatever you want and cut them out. And I just did this on cardstock and then put a little piece of tape on the back to just kind of hold it in place while we trace it. Now those of you who know me know I'm not a huge fan of using pencils and all that because I don't like to use chalk and all that and do the eraser marks and everything, but tonight we're going to use a mechanical pencil um, just to kind of give us our guideline here so that I can put my black, um, paint my background black for this stencil. And what we'll do is we'll make the black background go just over the pencil line and that way we don't have to have any eraser marks really when we do the outline. Ordinarily when I have my background I use a sharp tool that I call my etcher and that way I don't have to do the eraser marks. So there you go. That is the outline of our leaf. So next I'm going to just use a soft bristled brush, round acrylic brush. Well, maybe I'll go a little bit smaller. We'll use a smaller brush here. And we're going to paint the background on the leaf black. And this will give us a little bit of pop against our color, but also a little bit of forgiveness when it comes to um, if I do something that makes a mistake or an unintended area that I paint um, the black background, we can just scrape it off. If I get it quickly, we can wipe it with baby wipes. Those usually work, but if not, we can scrape the paint off and then just grab the the color and redo it again. So this is just a general outline of the leaf. I'm just following along and just going barely over that pencil line so that I don't have to um, erase it, do any eraser marks.
and then even our stem. And then I just kind of flatten out any of the major lines. We don't have bumps that we're trying to paint over. Alright, so I am just going to use a compass here. And I'm going to put the point down at the bottom of my stem. And this is just going to be a few guidelines to just kind of help us make our mandala decently symmetrical as much as possible on this design. So the first ring includes the stem and then I'm going to kick it out about a quarter of an inch. And then another quarter of an inch. to kind of keep our design going here. So you don't want to draw into the white part. That's going to be where the, it, that design ends. Uh, we'll just do one more here for good measure. I just want to keep make sure you keep your point in the same place because this is going to help us keep our mandala a little symmetrical. All right, so first off, I'm going to use, use a soft paintbrush, smaller paintbrush, and we're going to use rich espresso. And we're going to fill in this first arc all the way down through the stem. So the rich espresso, and we're just going to follow that whole line. <clears throat> I realized I didn't have my turntable underneath. Okay. So again, we're just following the line of the first curve we made and then filling in the bottom part here with this nice glittery rich espresso. And then we're also going to do the stem. And if you do not have brushes, you can just kind of paint this in with a dotting tool too, and that way you won't have a lot of brush marks either if you use your dotting tool. And just kind of drag the paint out in the shape of this area. All right, so we're gonna let that dry. All right, so while that is drying, we're gonna talk the tools I'm gonna use here. These are just dotting styluses, and I've bent the ends because I really just like to be able to see where I'm placing the dots, and it's a lot easier for me with the videos as well to see where I'm placing the dots. So this, these sets usually go in this order, so green is the largest with about three millimeters, the blue is next largest, about two and a half, two. This is the, the white, then yellow, then pink. And then they're all, all the other same at the other end. So these are the ones I'm going to be using for the design tonight. And we're going to start off with the first one, which is the pink, the smallest. 
and we're going to start with some white. It can be really any white. I just have white wash here. And what we're going to do is look for about the center at the top of this arc. Now I can either just go ahead and space them out and start off dotting from there on to either side or you could put a dot at either side here and then kind of partition it off so that you kind of get equidistant dots by making it half the size, half the size, but I think as far as we're going here, as long as you're not letting the dots bleed into one another and getting them as close as possible, that's how I'm going to do my row. So admittedly, I did this entire video today already once. <laughs> I was a lot more spunky when I did it earlier, I apologize as the night wears on, but my software got rid of everything except for 13 minutes out of an hour long video. <laughs> but it's okay, it gives me a chance to practice this again and kind of make sure that the pattern works and the stencil works and also, I just really love fall colors, so I'm not, I'm not really complaining. So again, I'm just going as close as possible to each one on down the line. Okay, next up is Sunny Day, and I'm still going to use the smallest tool, and we're going to go in between the spaces of the white that we just put down. And I personally just like to start at the top. So smallest dotting tool using sunny day paint and we're just doing another little row with these dots in between the white that we put down first. The next color I'm going to use is primary yellow. And I'm actually going to bump up the dotting tool size to the yellow dotting tool, which is just a hair bigger. And we're going to start in the center of the yellows. And it's going to be a little bit bigger, so make sure you give yourself space. And I just happen to end up on our guideline.
are you guys doing? You enjoying these colors? I love it how it goes from like a light to dark gradient. All right. So now, actually, on this one, technically we would have another yellow right in here, and then just with hair on the edge of here. I cannot fit it as a whole dot. So you can either leave it as negative space, or what I'm going to do is go down to the smallest tool. I'm going to steal from one of the closest dots, and I'm going to just draw in a semicircle here, kind of, that follows the guideline of my leaf. Because if we didn't have a leaf there, our pattern would continue on, right? So if it was a full mandala stone. But the thing about using these stencils is you have that illusion of, hey, the pattern continues, but it really doesn't, so you got to make it look like it does. Just like that. Next up, we're going to use one of the new Extreme Sheen paints, and this is the 24 karat gold. And I'm going to move up in size to the white dotting tool so the end is a little bit bigger. And you can vary your designs, obviously, just by using different size tools that'll help you vary your designs to different sizes. So that's a helpful little hint, too. All right, so with these extreme sheens, you have to kind of be cautious, because when you put the paint down and then pick it up, there's going to be a little bit of a connection. So you have to let the string kind of drop off before you move your tool. Otherwise, you're just going to get a line of where the paint drops across your piece. And we don't want that to happen. <laughs> At least I don't right now. So I'll show you here. Get a good amount on the tool. And start at the top again. And I kind of swirl it in and then pick it up. So that kind of helps it. With the brushes, it's a little more forgiving. They come off a little easier for me. But with the dotting tools, I find that sometimes I am crossing it over. You want to get into that rhythm, you know, that you're usually in with the thinner paint, so just have to slow down a little and en enjoy these bright colors with the glitter. Pick it up and let it drop. These really one these ones really have a nice shine to them too. Even when you varnish over them afterwards too, they look amazing. I usually use a high gloss varnish. Just because it'll help with the metallics to just keep that glittery shine for you. Alright, so the same as we ended up with before. So we have a little bit of space on that here, so I'm gonna drop down the tool size. And then just kind of shape it along here as if there were another dot but we're at the edge and I'm gonna pop these bubbles here so I think pop. there we go okay next up we have the dazzling metallics copper and I'm gonna go up a size with the tool as well. Now with our copper what we're going to do is start back up here near our top. 
but we're going to skip two spaces and then do another copper dot there, skip two spaces, another copper dot here, and the same on the side, one, two, dot, one, two, copper, just like that. And that'll give us a little space to create a design around the larger copper dots. So I'm using the larger tool. And I kind of want a, a bit larger, I could go up to the green tool, but I just wanted these ones a little bit larger for this stone. So I'm just pushing the paint around into a circle, into a dot. Just like that. Alright, so I'm going to go back to our smallest dotting tool and the white. And we're going to do a ring of white around each of those copper. Alright. All you're doing as you go around to get the smaller dots is just letting the tool run off. I mean, letting the paint run off the tool. <laughs> letting the tool run off with your paint. No, you're just letting the paint run off the tool as you go around. And the dots will automatically decrease in size. Alright, so now we're going to grab some more copper and we'll do another ring or, and it'll be in copper here, still with the small dotting tool. I re-dipped it a couple of times so I can make these a little bit bigger and kind of close that gap so we don't have the negative space as much in between. And the copper is good too because it helps us do our transition from kind of the lights and then yellows. And then we want to transition into orange and then red on this one. That was 
kind of my mental plan. Right, so when we get over here, I'm not in the space to have copper at the top. So I'm going to have to start at the next space where I would be putting a dot. And then on this side, since I've already kind of let the paint go off the tool, I'm just going to hop over here while it would still be a little dot and add them in over there. I'm going to go back to our blue, the larger dotting tool, with some peaches and cream. So we'll start transitioning into our orange zone here. And we're going to go in between each of these sections here that we created the copper, the last copper ring around. Okay, next up I have Coral Blush. And we're going to use that to do a fairly large dot over each of these copper designs. And again, I'm just going to push the dot around into a larger circle. Maybe we'll even go a little bit bigger with this one. Like that. And you can use the blue or the green, but just the large, one of the larger ends. Because we're not actually just dipping and dotting, we're actually dragging it around into a circle. This one's on the edge of our stencil, so we just have to be cognizant of the lines there. And this one as well. And it'll vary by the size of your stone and how big you made your dots or what tools you're using, where you get on each design. So when I did it on another stone, it was the different size dots a little bit. I only got three of these big coral blush ones. Alright, so this would be right here. We're just going to have to kind of draw in where our circle would be. And that's a bit of a challenge, but you can do it. I believe in you guys. So pretend, and then just barely hit over here. And I probably could use even smaller ends of the tool. That might be a little easier to work with. It's definitely easier with brushes. You can just take the brush and kind of paint in where it would be. So this one, the dot would be here. But we're putting our circle out, pushing it out. There's just a little bit of coral that would be showing. Okay, now while these corals are still wet, I'm going to steal some paint and do one ring around
like I said, you just have to kind of pretend. So I'd be at the top here, around, they'd be getting smaller right here. Up, around, 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 and then they'd be really small. And then this one is just going to have a couple of smaller ones right around the side. And this guy, I just want to kind of get rid of that black so it's not as blatant there. Okay. I'm going to steal from the stack says more pretend like at the top. And I'm working my way around. So I have to, I have to kind of have a mental image of it. Some of you may be able to do this without even thinking about it and just toss them on there. <laughs> so at top. And then on this one, I'm actually going to pull it all the way out to our stencil's edge here. Which I might have to do after, because it started to dry a little bit. Yeah, I'll let that one be for a minute and then fix it after. Alright, so we have one ring of coral blush. Next, we're going to use Tangelo Orange. I only need two little ones over here, so I'm just going to steal from one of these dots here so it'll have less. I can just tuck them in there. Okay, next I have watermelon slice. This is a fun kind of pinkish red. So while I just have a little bit, I'm going to come over here. Actually, I didn't have enough. I'm going to add over here next to our tangelo on that one. And then... So you can see our spacing is going to be a little off over here, 
but we're gonna do red next and we'll just use it for fill so we'll blend that in that's the fun thing about these it's just kind of make it your own each time and you can add so you're doing a larger one you can add rings if you want the design if you're doing a larger leaf too you can do that so do two of white two of yellow two of each yellow two of the gold and that will help draw the design out farther also and then two rings of each color as well So I'm just taking a step back to look at our design here and you just kind of want to eyeball I think we actually should add some watermelon here because that would have been the same width that you would start to see it back in the design so I'm actually gonna go here and add them down like that All right, next up I have True Red. And I'm just gonna use the smaller end for now because we're filling in over here, down around these ones over here. I'm not going to crowd that for right now. I'm going to let that dry. But I'm going to grab a little more of that true red, and this is where it would be over here. And at the top here. So I'm kind of making these top dots a little larger because I kind of want to push them into the peak of that leaflet there. Also that way as we came down around the side, it kind of helps to close the gap a little bit. So that's another thing too with your design, you can just kind of finagle the dots a little, a little bigger, a little smaller to help fit your design better. All right, so now I'm going to grab some rose gold and we're going to fill in under our peaches and cream area down here and then off the sides here as well. So it'll be above the 24 karat gold. We're going to put rose gold in between each of our little copper elements there. And the rose gold is one of the extreme sheens again, so we need to be cautious. Alright. I'm 
remember to let the strain drop. I'm saying that out loud too to just remind myself. <laughs> Especially when I'm excited about doing a video, I forget to, to remind myself to go slow, calm down, take a breath. Since we have that rose gold down on our palette here, might need a little bit more. We have these spaces here above the peach where I'm going to tuck a little bit of rose gold with a small end of the dotting tool into each of those spots. And that'll just help us fill in so there's less negative space there. Just like that. All right, so now it's basically fill work on top. So I'm going to use the true red to continue out on our tips of our leaves here and just continue the pattern around the designs we have here. This one is gonna, I'm gonna have to use the smaller end so I can just kind of fill in here. Where the next dot would go. The next one would be off the pattern. Switch to the smaller end. I can just kind of tuck them in here. And there you have another fall mandala stone. So as I do this, sometimes I'll walk away and come back or I'll take a picture of it. And I just do it because I want to see if there's any spots that I just am not happy with. So as I'm looking at it on the camera screen, there's this spot over here 
or it's just like this blatant black space. <laughs> so I think I might even draw in the half circle because over here we have the rose gold and then a peach, rose gold and a peach. So this would be rose gold and there would have been a peach up there. So I'm just going to tuck a half circle in there of the peach. I find looking at it on the camera is, is helpful for that to see or sometimes even walking away and coming back works, but not always. But that just helps me see kind of where I would have wanted to work out more details on a design. So now you could wait and let it dry and then add top dots or there's not really much more we can squeeze in. I mean, you could put little tiny ones in here if you really didn't want any of your background black showing. Um, but I'm going to leave this as is for this design and no top dots. And then I'm going to wait for it to dry completely because one of the things with these extreme sheens is they take quite a while. So I usually let 24 hours go by and I will come in then and erase any pencil lines that I see from the design. So like I said, I'll put all the helpful links in the description and a link to my Etsy shop as well so that you can, if you want, purchase the pattern or let other people know if they want a pattern that it will be on there soon. Also, I will put all the links for any of the items that I have in the video from the paint to the tools to the turntable, the stones as well. Remember those are for cat couriers. And uh, if you are looking for more ways to get in touch with me, I am on Instagram and it's more of an art gallery there as well as Miranda Patron Art at Facebook and we can interact there. I also I'm doing a giveaway right now, so you should definitely go check that out on either Facebook or, or Instagram. And uh, if you are looking for more of my videos or you want to know when the next videos come out, then you can just click that bell and subscribe to my channel and you will be notified anytime that I put out a new video, you will get a notification. So. I really enjoyed doing this small mandala with you all. It's so fun doing different things and trying to fit it in the leaf and it's a little bit of a challenge, but you got this. So I just want to show too the other one that I had. Let's see if I can put them both on the screen here. The one I did earlier. All right, so I just wanted to back out with the camera here a little bit, but as you can see, the one I did earlier I only fit three of those coral blush ones in because the design was actually farther up on it. So this one we were able to fit multiple corals in. So just kind of make the design work for you and tuck in where you can tuck in if you have extra space um, and that way you can make the design your own but also it just kind of fits into the pattern a little bit easier. So again, it's even with me using the same tools, I dotted a little bit differently, like the gold or the espresso rather on this was larger area, which pushed the design up more than it did on this one. So this one I actually fit more red at the top as well. So it's gonna vary, but it's still gonna be a great base to doing this pattern. So I hope you all love it as much as I did. I love fall. And I will see you all in the comments and back for another video soon. So again, be sure to check out the giveaway that I have going on on Instagram and Facebook. And I will see you all soon. Happy painting!